All right, we're on with uh, Jacob Torrey from Port Angeles, Washington. I think yep. it's the first, first time we've ever done a podcast with someone. I mean, you're way out northwest, so Heck yeah. you, you live in one of the coolest hunting and fishing areas in the country, I believe. Man, I can't wait to, uh, to hear about it. And uh, you're injured. You're 23 now. You were injured with five years ago. Is that right? Yeah, 2018, June 1st, 2018. So okay, so you're you're a, or, just for, so people know your T10 para. Yep, complete. And what uh, what kind of stuff were you into? Obviously, outdoors before you got an injury, right? What else were you into? Uh, just your typical, typical small town high school kid stuff, you know, just tinkering with trucks, running around, hiking uh shoot doing fun crazy stuff yeah just i mean kind of what got me in this thing so just yeah small town high school kids stuff so, i've always been really active uh so yeah just hunting fishing hiking dirt bikes trucks girls <laughs> all that stuff <laughs> right right when you were injured were you thinking it was you were done doing that stuff or did you think about that at all what was that like uh you know not really i mean when i got i was only in the hospital like shit a month uh so i broke my i cracked i cracked my skull here broke my back and then my scapula i broke that's all that happened uh yeah but I got ejected. They said I got ejected out of the vehicle at like 60 to 80 miles an hour. So I'm, I got real lucky. Um, uh, and I guess they said what broke my back was, you know, those big concrete blocks, the ecology blocks. Yeah. That's what they said broke it. They found me up against there. Uh, but it could have been a lot of things going that fast. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm lucky to be here. So, so you weren't in a rehab hospital per se you were just in a regular hospital recovered you know yeah. whatever they did to fix your back yeah they had rehab there kind of uh there wasn't really i mean basically they just you know uh helped me balance figure out how to calf do my daily routine you know figure out my new life situation basically but i mean like i said there for a month and then uh my dad he's a fireman well he's retired now but he he uh basically i was in there for a month came home he had to go back to work and it's it was just me and him so i'm kind of you know gotta figure it out yeah you had time for you to figure everything out yep and uh i mean the first year was pretty hard uh i mean i don't really remember much to be honest i think i kind of just just put it out but i mean i pretty kind of depressed a little bit laying around not doing too much you know kind of i had a girlfriend at the time that i was dating before and some stuff happened with that and so i was kind of depressed about that and then all my friends you know they're out doing whatever and yeah <laughs> doing that and so i was a little depressed but after that first year um i just i mean i got over it and started doing it i mean i started hunting and fishing after that first year and what was the uh when your first trips out what was the what was your first hunting trip out and what was your first fishing trip out do you remember not do my memory so bad uh i think that's partially from hitting my head that hard but uh don't be blaming it on that <laughs> <laughs> i blocked a, i blocked a lot of stuff out that first year too it was just such a traumatic time yeah, I don't know. It's natural. Yeah, uh, I did. The first fishing trip I went on was Steelhead. Um, and that was, I mean, we caught like four fish that day, some nice fish. And I remember, though, I remember fighting it. <laughs> and it's like pulling me forward. And my dad had to hang on to my shoulders and pull me back. And we got yeah. it. Did you get in? Were you fishing out of a boat or were you on the bank there? A raft, yep. Okay. Yeah. So my dad and his buddy, they use rafts. Uh, they used to have willy boats, hard drift boats, but right. raft, 
rafts are pretty, they're easy to move around, um, bounce off the rocks. The rivers are real rocky, you know, so uh, bounce off the rocks, easy to maneuver. Uh, they're strong. How did, you, how did you sit up in that thing? It's just, a, it's got a chair in there. Okay. Chair, it's got a backrest, just sit in the chair. And then I also, uh, we put this bar in the front. So it kind of, the bar goes up and then across like this. So in case uh, something does happen, if we hit a rock abruptly or something, I got something to hold me in there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, put like a seat belt, uh, kind of just like this around the chair just to help hold me in. I mean, right. is that because I like to be able to move around, but um that's that's one thing I have done to help help hold me in. I mean, that was when I was first injured too. So I've built up some more strength now. You know, I can kind of control myself. And if we're going through a situation that's going to be rocky or something, I'm usually not fishing. I'm just focusing on hanging on. Hanging on, yeah, yeah. But um, yes, yeah, good. You had some adaptations that you thought of on your first time out, and it and it worked, obviously. Yep. And then uh, for hunting. Um, I got a crossbow, um, and I was hunting some like private area, uh, just on somebody's property who I knew. Um, and shoot, I hunted, I set up trail cams in there and everything. And, uh, and I just, I hunted it for like two weeks, three weeks, like every yeah. day. And finally got a shot. I was with this old guy, we call him Feather. Uh, he's like 78, 80. He's a retired fireman too. And yeah. He just wants to kill everything that breathes, but he's funny. He, uh, he, I was with him and the buck came out and I shot it with my crossbow at like 60 yards. I actually missed the first one, uh, shot over it. And then the second one, I drilled it and got him. Luckily, he didn't run. When I missed him, he kind of like moved around, started to go back into the timber. And I got yeah. one more and got him. And then ever since then, like I said, it's it's all I do now is just when hunting season's around here, it's all I do. Fishing, same thing. That was it. It's a little different for you because up, you know, like you were telling me in your area, mm -hmm. there aren't that many. There, There's no group organizations doing stuff that I'm aware of and and so you're kind of left on your own to figure stuff out and uh you know just I guess it's just you, where you are you know yep it's not easy to find not easy to find other people in your situation to go do stuff with or even maybe just learn from you know how they're doing things or what they're doing yep there's uh, that I know of here I got one buddy here who's in a chair and He's not into hunting and fishing. He's kind of hippie. <laughs> He's got, <laughs> uh, but I mean, we're good friends. I don't care. You know, yeah. Yeah. Care as long as you're cool. And I mean, you got your own views. I got mine, but it's not going to stop me from being your friend as long as it's nothing crazy. But, uh, right. yeah. And, and so I got that guy and he actually, uh, He's into growing, gardening, vegetables, all that stuff. So that's kind of what got me into the vegetables and stuff, you know, growing vegetables and stuff like that. It's just a hobby, something I can do that keeps me busy. Cool. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's really, I haven't found anybody else in the wheelchair around here, at least a couple hours from me that I know. Uh, most people who end up in my situation are like loggers who have trees fall on them or something and. Yeah, I haven't. I think there's one guy I heard around here who's like a quadriplegic. He had a tree fall on him, but never met him, never seen him. Uh, yeah, that's about it. And the area around here is really tree. Uh, it's mountainous, not not level. Right. Uh, and well, then not too conducive for a uh, wheelchair action up there. Yep. And then. Uh, so there's, like I said, there's a lot of logging up here. That's like one of the biggest things up here is logging. That That's what keeps this place afloat. And uh, so there's there's gates, there's road access, but most of the gates are shut. They don't want the public back there because they get the public back there and people take their four-wheel drives back there or whatever. Or I don't know. It's just Washington. Washington's kind of a, 
Uh, it's not the uh, I like it here, but uh, there could definitely be some changes with the state. It's kind of oh sure yeah, and so they don't want people back there. There's not very much handicap access at all, uh, or even for hunting. Like I was, I've been looking, trying to figure out. There's I guess there's some gate keys I can get to get gate access, and like the one of the gates is Cassidy Creek, they call it. Um, and it's supposed to be for disabled people, right? They got a key. Um, but I mean, this last year it was just wide open for anybody. So it's kind of, I don't know, that's kind of pointless. So it's <laughs> welcome to the, uh, the, uh, public hunting world when it comes to, you know, able outdoors, it's, it's sometimes, sometimes it's good. Sometimes, you know, you have to, you have to figure your way around it. Yeah, so. most hunting is is clear cut hunting. Uh, just there's black tail deer here, black bear, cougars, bobcats, elk, Roosevelt elk. Uh, there where I live here in Port Angeles, there's just there's black tails, bears. Uh, there's about 20 minutes east in Squim. There's some elk, Roosevelt elk. There's not really any elk here in PA for whatever reason. I don't know why they don't come over here. Uh, and then about 45 minutes west, there's that's the elk spot out in Forks, they call it. Uh, yeah. That's the rainforest, more rainforest than here. And that's where I go fishing most of the time, too. But Have you ever, have you ever elk hunted? Uh, yeah, I've tried. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's hard, man, because, like I said, there's a lot of clear cuts and there's a lot of people who go do it and you really need to be in shape you just got to get out there and hike yeah. it has to be super tough i mean if you can't if you can't have access to the roads now it has to be super tough yeah i'm pretty much next year i'm gonna look into it i've been talking to some guys who who uh i just want to make sure like i got a good chance i don't want to be wasting my time just driving around out there it's hard on my back too i mean right. so uh um but yeah mostly like what i would have to do is just drive around the roads take my side by side on the road check clear cuts um stuff like that the ideal way would be you know get in the timber and go hunt them but it that's kind of out of my option you know so or get a private piece of property that they right. rent. uh yeah. which i think that's what i'm gonna do next year this guy i know he's got up some property and they'll run through that so i might just go sit there for a week and see what happens but uh tell me about uh tell me about your fishing because it's totally different from the fishing we do down here in texas on the coast yes what, what kind of fishing fish do you go after and where do you do you fish the lakes i mean the rivers the ocean or what's it like yeah so we got salmon here steelhead um halibut ling cod there's bottom fish uh i'm trying to think what else there are some bass you gotta kind of uh there's some ponds that you can go fish that have bass people stock them with bass it's not really a thing though around here it's not a not like a big deal i think there's maybe two ponds i know that got some bass yeah but it's mainly the big fish, the saltwater, the salmon. Yeah, rivers and saltwater for sure. There's, there's a lake. There's Lake Crescent here, which is one of the biggest lakes in the world. Actually, it's really deep, and they got these things called Beardsley in there. Um, you're not, you can't keep them because it's in the park. You can fish for them, but can't keep them. And they're a trout, but some of yeah. them. I mean, there's records out of there like twenty pound trout. Uh, they're hard to catch. Like I said, they're really deep. Um, and they got the top of them. It's like a, they're like bright blue and it's, it's, um, it's like a landlocked sockeye or something like that. Um, so we got that and that's in Lake Crescent, but like you said, you can't keep it. Um, and I go do that sometimes just when there's nothing else to go do nothing else to fish for in the summertime whatever just go out there on a nice day and go try and catch one but mostly river fishing and saltwater uh chinook salmon coho salmon and then steelhead in the river um, you mostly fish out of a boat or is it riverbank yeah mostly out of a boat yeah so yeah well, you, 
you can go you can go so many more places once you get in the boat yeah it's easier for me too and uh yeah you just there's a it's called a turnaround so you launch your boat at one spot call the turnaround lady she goes picks your truck up drives it to the next down the river and you just float down uh, to whatever spot and on that's the river supposed be, that's supposed to be your girlfriend doing that you know <laughs> yeah that's, that's well, the turnaround lady <laughs> the lady who does it for me she's like I don't know. She's probably 65, 70. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. You'll but, get there. You'll get there someday. Don't worry. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the raft, that raft's what we use on the river. And then my dad's got a 22 foot Olympic resorter. Uh, and that's what we use on the salt water. And luckily, like I said, I mean, we live right by the water. It takes us 10 minutes, 15 minutes to go launch the boat in the salt water just go down the hill and launch it and go um and yeah i mean so there's a we got this thing called edis hook and it's like a just a piece of land that kind of goes out um goes out there's like a bay and then there's the ocean and it's kind of just a, a one two lane road that goes out there and then the coast guard's yeah. right at the end and you just launch right in that bay go around the coast guard station you can drop right at the coast guard station there's good king fishing right there along the the uh right by the coast guard station along the the shore there um so how do you how do you keep warm this is this will be good because you're you're i know you got in a lot colder environment than we do how do you yeah. keep your eggs warm layers uh layers. Layers, what kind though? Some are better than others. What do you use? Merino wool. Uh, so I use, so I'll wear like long johns and then I'll wear merino wool on top of that. And then, um, depending how cold it is, sometimes, you know, I'll put sweatpants on. And then I either got, I got these pants from Kuyu. Uh, they're kind of like a wool, wool material, they got suspenders. Uh, and they go up real high on your liver and stuff. Um, Are they waterproof? They're water uh, resistant. <laughs> yeah, usually. Uh, so I got like rain pants too. I put over. They're thin. Yeah. yeah. I got pants. So a lot of times I'm wearing multiple layers, especially this time of year. Uh, I just, I kind of before you know I was wearing like five or six layers, and it's such a pain to even go pee or any of that. Yeah, well, it's a pain to put them on. Yeah, yeah. So what I did now for Christmas, actually, I spoiled myself a little bit. I got some new waders. So I got, uh, so what I wear now is that long johns, merino wool, and then I put on the waders and, or no, sorry, long johns, merino wool, kuyu pants, and then the waders. The waders, yeah. Layers, and my legs been staying warm. And then I also got these Panuma pants, uh, and they're kind of heated. Um, and it just, I'm, I'm real scared about heated stuff yeah. because myself. So I keep it on the super low setting. Um, and that helps too, but I think if you had a couple of layers under it, it would probably be a lot safer, you know, than, than just have the heated pants to your skin, next to your skin. Yep. So yeah. If you got some layers, it would be, it would be a lot better. I'd yep. feel, I'd feel better about using it anyway. Yep. And then for the upper body, just same thing, layers up, um, you know, the Under Armour stuff. stuff. Yeah. And, and then I also wear this, uh, you probably seen that picture you posted, actually, I had that mask thing on and that thing helps a lot. Keep me warm. Like, it, if I don't have that thing, dude, I'm, I hate it. I mean, it helps a lot keeping you yeah. out of your head. Uh, so keeping your head warm helps a lot and then what kind, of, what kind of boots what about your feet uh well if i'm fishing you know just on the salt water i got these they're called deck boss boots they're from um uh uh rubber tough or whatever that brand is some i can't uh, think I just order some that that were from extra tough is extra tough. that's them yeah i heard they were warm too warm and yep they're and easy pretty easy to get on and off yeah they are they're flexible yeah they're really easy to get on and off just put them on twist a little bit and yeah 
but uh yeah that and then i got these socks they're called seal skin socks they're freaking 44 dollars a pair but <laughs> they're i mean it's basically like uh it's basically like wearing the bottom of the waiter like they're waterproof right they keep you they keep me really warm so i'll wear those seal, seal skin socks and then either is my brand is that seal skin is the brand or the the brand okay i'll yep. have to i may post that in the comments i'll find it yep and post the link to some yep. of the stuff we're talking about yep yeah those keep my 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 feet warm and um yeah that's about it for my feet um and then yeah, that's pretty much it. Just layers. And, you know, if it did, like I said, the coldest it got this year was 12 degrees. It, it usually doesn't get cold, but, I mean, it gets cold. Um, and usually I'm not out. I mean, sometimes I'm hunting in that weather and fishing in that weather, but most of the time we try and pick the better days, warmer days. I mean, fishing's not really that good when it's really cold like that either. They don't like to bite. That's uh, good because I wouldn't be going out in it. Yeah. And then when it's cold, it makes the river clear, and yeah. it's that's even harder fishing. So, yeah, it's usually I'm not. I mean, I'm definitely out and about doing stuff in that weather, but not not too much. You know, I gotta take care of my body too. I don't want to freeze my legs off. So, yeah. Right, you got it. Well, and like you were telling me about when you were fishing you gotta you have to sit take care of your skin you gotta sit on your pad or something you gotta be careful because those boat seats are just hard plastic yep no it's got no padding so i got a rojo just typical air cushion i usually when i sit in that chair on the on the well in the salt water i just stay in my wheelchair so, yeah and then on the river in the raft we sit in that chair so i just sit on my pad and then you know make sure i'm doing my pressure release and um and for, then for yeah. people who don't know you live i mean you're you're right there close to canada I'm just mm -hmm. a stone throw away from vancouver island too so we we're, we're going to be talking someday because we we talked about this a little bit earlier about bear hunting on vancouver island because that's one of the that's one of the bucket list places to go hunt black bear. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You, there's you're going to have to look into it for us. I will into it. I, I mean, I've been thinking about it for sure. Uh, like I said, it's right, it's right over there. I mean, shoot, just hop on the ferry boat right here in town and go over there. Yeah. You're, Hey, we could throw, we could get those outrider chairs and put them on that ferry and, and go right over there and, and do a bear hunt over there. That'd be super cool. Yep, that'd be crazy. And actually, the ferry boat, I used to work for him before I got hurt, too. So we might get special treatment. <laughs> there you go. We'll get to ride in the in the, in the the top cabin. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Where, where they're serving caviar and... and <laughs> you <can. laughs> yeah. Have you ever tried deer heart? We cooked it. Yeah, I like, I like all that stuff. We, I, I tried it the other day. I don't know if I, I'm kind of a texture guy. I don't know. It was too. Yeah. I like I like liver. So yeah. liver liver's a little irony, just like the heart is, because it's just such a, you know, just the way the muscle that heart muscle is built. Yep. So it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. The other day, actually, my buddy, what day was it? Friday. Or my one of my buddies. He's he's a he's Indian, Native American. He's part of the l wall tribe here and so they can hunt till like march around oh, here yeah. and he he doubled up he got two bucks so i me and my buddy went over there and helped him gut it out and skin it for him and all that stuff and he cooked up both the hearts that day and that's when i tried it and he <laughs> at loved least, at least you tried it yep <laughs> yeah not for me <laughs> what uh how how important is it for being where you are and not having many people around you, how important is it for social media for you to be able to use that to, you know, find people that are doing stuff in the outdoors and just, just kind of get an idea of, you know, group hunts that are going on, adaptive equipment, you know, it's always good to, it's always good to find people that are 
doing the same thing you're doing, you know, just, yep. to, just so you, so you know, there are other people doing it and what's possible out there. And maybe you might be one of those people someday that, that are, that are leading the way, especially in, in Washington. No, I definitely like, I mean, I want to, I, I like being around people in my situation and especially people who are, you know, like-minded and like doing stuff like I like to do. And I would definitely, like I said, like, I want to take you fishing up here or anybody else who wants to go. I mean, it'd be cool just to go and do it, but, uh, it's social media is everything. Like that's, that's, that's how I found, that's how I got in contact with you. That's how, um, that's how I got in contact with all the other friends I have on social media who are in similar situations. Uh, I went to, I went to Kentucky with Huntsman's Creed, Tony Grasso. Yeah. I've heard of those guys. Yep. He's a really good dude. He's solid. I like him a lot. And, uh, I went with him over there in Kentucky, shot a nice white tail with him with my muzzleloader. Uh, and he had track chairs there so I could use the track chair, shot it out of the track chair, took the track chair up, went right to the deer. I mean, it was awesome. And so, and I actually seen that he had a, he had his on TV. So, uh, I got a hole and put it on there after seeing it on TV. And then I also went to Wyoming with Wyoming disabled hunters and shot an antelope. Um, and I found them through Facebook. Um, oh yeah, they're a good group. I, yep. I, I, I tell a lot of people about them, hook them up with what, with them. They're awesome. I mean, yeah, they were willing to do whatever it took. They had adapted. I mean, they had a bathroom that was accessible for me. They had places you could stay anything you needed or wanted. They would help you out. I mean, um, it's, yeah, I put in for it again. So you got to wait one year before you can do it. Last, the last time I went was for yeah. antelope here. I want to try and go get a deer down there, uh, or an elk. An elk would be cool, but, uh, well, I know that's on your bucket list. We're going to have to, we're going to have to get together. I know if, if it, it, it'll, it'll be more than me coming up there to fish. You'll have to, you have to come down here. I want get, get involved in some of the stuff we're doing. I told you I am. If, if I'm not going down there with you this next year, I'm, I'm going to, I want to go down to Texas and shoot a buck, whether it's a coal buck or what, I mean, their coal bucks are huge for me. <laughs> some of them, some yeah. of them are. As long as it's a heavy, mature buck, I'm happy, man. I like yeah. it got some character shoot even if it doesn't I, I just like to hunt and do it it's all about the experience kind of and the i mean of course i'd be happier if i came home with something but uh just it's just cool to be out there and do it, harvest something and and yeah i just like doing it i love it you're gonna have to drive you know you can't can't fly back with a deer on the plane <laughs> no yeah, see when i was uh trying to think what i did in wyoming we just we flew back but we had a, a cooler and then we wrapped we had the cooler had everything frozen made sure it was cold then we wrapped it in some more yeah. cold and took it on the plane and it was fine and then with the head too did that but well yeah. i'll have to when when ashley came down here and hunted we had her deer processed down here so Mm -hmm. I just drove it back up to her. It gave me an excuse to go up to, to Wyoming during the summer. There you go. So we, well, we may have to do the same. We'll, we'll do the same deal. And I'll drive up there, drive it up to you, and then we'll go fishing. Oh, that'd be awesome, dude. That'd be a long drive, though. Um. <laughs> a long drive, but, man, it's, we, I've driven up to Wyoming and Montana like six, seven times already, maybe more. Damn. So best way to see the country. Yeah, it is cool. Like when I was younger, I was like, uh, I wasn't into traveling or nothing like that. I'll just stay here. But now it's like, I like going places where it's a different, different country. I like checking out the animals there. It's different yeah. around here. Like I said, it's kind of hard, especially hunting. Um, it's not handicap friendly at all. So it's kind of difficult. But if I get into those other states, it's like a dream land for me. It's I mean, so much stuff I can look at so many animals, so many like, 
it's it's so much better you know so i i definitely every year it's like my thing now is i want to go at least one out of state hunt every year somewhere else and just check out different area i hear you you're telling Noah about the flood on that deal i yep. love going out of state at least once a year yeah that's my plan i'm i'm gonna stick to it i'm doing it <laughs> so we'll we'll i'll let you know I'm, and i'll hit you, i'll let you know what you should put in for and stuff and we'll talk we'll talk we'll talk after the stream's over <laughs> yeah yeah i'm still learning all that stuff too so what to put in for good all that stuff yeah yeah well, well man thanks for coming on and and just telling us a little bit about your story yeah well, you know, there's 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 gonna be people out there that need to hear it always. Yep. It's, it's, especially because you've been kind of forced to blaze your own trail up there. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Figuring out things that that help me out. Like for instance, on the salt water, you know, when I'm fishing on there, normal normal pull holders, you gotta like you gotta grab the pole and you gotta pull it forward and then out. And yeah not having all my abs i mean i can only lean forward so much and then i can't control it so uh i got these i've figured out got these ones they're like clamshell kind of uh you just push down and it locks down on it and then to pull it out you just you just kind of go like like that and pop yeah. out and then uh we got these attachments that kind of drop it lower so it's more like right on my uh right over my 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 legs so i'm not leaning all over and it makes it a lot easier when the fish bites and you know i just pop pull pull it off the clip reel down and yeah it's just little things like that i mean you just got to do it and then figure yeah. out you're gonna have to send me the links to that stuff and or a pick or two so i can we'll post it up with this podcast yeah because somebody will be looking for it. Heck, I may be, you know, it's something we may use down here in Texas sometime. For sure. I definitely, I want to go down there and I want to go catch tarpon too. Red or red drum, all that stuff. I mean, that's my other thing. I want to go on some fishing trips in different areas too. Go do well, that. We'll be doing it, buddy. I'll keep you posted. Heck yeah. <laughs> we, we, we don't have to wait till next fall. We can, uh, we'll do something this summer maybe. Heck yeah, I'm down for that. You have to come up here too. Will do, man. Hey, thanks again. I know we're going to be in touch. Heck yeah. Keep, keep grinding out. Don't, don't ever quit learning. There's always something out there to learn. For sure, for sure. You just got to adapt and overcome. Just do it. Don't be afraid. Have good people around you. Uh, don't be afraid to ask for help, for one. Um, yeah, just have people around you and, and just do it. Figure it out. It's not going to be easy the first couple times, but you figure it yeah amen to that yep right on right, we'll, thanks we'll see you soon just hang on all right